Is this 2003 release being overshadowed by the recent special editions of Let It Be? Welcome or welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll get back to Let It Be Naked. Of late, there's been a great deal more light shown on the period in Beatles history comprised of sessions from January 69. Thanks to the recent Get Back book, special editions of the Let It Be album, and of course, Peter Jackson's brilliantly epic docuseries, Get Back. After dedicating 10 videos in a row to all things Get Back slash Let It Be, I started a poll asking viewers here on YouTube to express which of five items they'd most like to see a video dedicated to next. Overwhelmingly, the item most voted on was Let It Be Naked. It seems we fans of the Beatles are not quite ready to let our interest in Let It Be be. So let me get started. This has traveled through the decades with me. And here she is, my original copy of Let It Be Naked, purchased nearly 20 years ago. What's so special about this seemingly benign release? With all the hype surrounding remixed special editions of Sgt. Pepper, The White Album, Abbey Road, and Let It Be, you'd be forgiven to think that remixing the Beatles is a fairly recent occurrence. However, Digital remixes of Beatles recordings can be traced back as far as 1987, when original producer George Martin sought remixing as a means of eliciting a more evolved stereo sound to what was achieved on the original studio recordings stereo mixes of some of the earlier Beatles albums. In the end, only Help and Rubber Soul would be remixed for their 1987 CD debut. As a matter of fact, those remixes were even chosen for inclusion with the batch of 2009 remastered CDs. Funny enough, fans who wanted the original stereo mixes were forced to seek them out as inclusions within the In Mono box set. In the mid-1990s, the Beatles Anthology Project provided more opportunity for some innocuous remixing of Beatles music, to incredible effect. And then came the 1999 release of a brand new Yellow Submarine song track album, this was the first major remixing project featuring bold new remixes of familiar Beatles classics. But it was Let It Be, which had the distinction of being the first complete Beatles album proper to be approved for remixing. And rather than a straightforward remixing project, this was a radical reworking of the album. A radical reworking of the album. Let It Be Naked was released in 2003 as an attempt to create an album closer to the original intent of a back-to-basics approach, without overdubs and overproduction. If anyone knows anything about overproduction, it's this guy. Although George Martin was involved as the supervising producer in January 1969, he later recalled how John Lennon infamously instructed him, none of your production rubbish is needed. The Get Back sessions, which produced the Let It Be album, were meant to be the Beatles. As nature intended! Of course, the end product wasn't quite that. When the Beatles had moved on from the project, producer Phil Spector was brought in and left to his own devices to reproduce the Get Back recordings for what would be the Beatles' swan song album. Let It Be Naked was initiated by Paul McCartney, who felt that Spector's reproduction didn't capture the group's original intent of avoiding vocal and instrumental overdubs and added effects in favor of a more live feel, with the band stripped down to the bare necessities. The tracks on Let It Be Naked were remixed and reworked by Abbey Road engineers Alan Rouse, Paul Hicks, and Guy Massey. This is the same Abbey Road team that would bring us the 2009 remasters. Using the original Let It Be album and an early attempt at an album by engineer Glenn Johns as references, the Abbey Road team assembled a new album. Alan Rouse commented, We mainly listened to identify the takes they used. As it turns out, Glenn and Phil had done most of the legwork we ended up using the vast majority of their takes. Each individual track of every song was digitally cleaned up before remixing work even began. Once the building blocks were in the digital domain, the engineers were able to delve into a bit more detail. According to Guy Massey, if there were fluffed lines or pops, etc., if there was another take without errors, we'd try inserting that part from the other take. On the Naked album, gone are most of the production choices of Phil Spector. No more orchestral or choral overdubs. In addition, the track listing was altered. The album opens with Get Back and closes with Let It Be. Dig It, Maggie May, 
and the bits of banter between songs were eliminated. Alan Rouse justified this decision as such. Those little bits were fine for a soundtrack album, which Glenn's was, but they didn't fit comfortably with the concept of a straight album. In place of the deleted material, Don't Let Me Down was wisely added as an album track, having originally appeared only as the non-album B-side of the Get Back single. These changes definitely made for a more polished, tighter sounding album. This is something significantly different from the original release of 1970. I personally really enjoy remixes. I feel like it gives me the opportunity to really listen to familiar music with a fresh perspective. I get excited about these kind of projects. However, I recognize that not everyone feels this way. For many years, my own exposure to Let It Be was simply the original version on cassette, then CD. It's this original version which sits most comfortably in my ear. Paul McCartney took some criticism for the release of Let It Be, Naked. It was referred to as an attempt by McCartney to resolve a decades-long grudge. The other Beatles were on record as complimentary about Phil Spector's contribution. Here's a Lennon quote from his December 1970 interview with Rolling Stone magazine. Lennon had defended Spector's work, stating, He was given the shittiest load of badly recorded shit and with a lousy feeling to it, ever. And he made something out of it. When I heard it, I didn't puke. This was a sentiment Paul did not share. It was no secret McCartney had long been aggrieved by the Let It Be album, particularly Spectre's 1970 post-production work which added his wall of sound signature to several songs. Chief among McCartney's objections was The Long and Winding Road, which he felt had been transformed from a simple piano ballad to a full-blown orchestral epic without his consent. Included in the book accompanying the 2021 Super Deluxe Special Edition of Let It Be is this historically significant letter from Paul McCartney to the Beatles' then-manager Alan Klein from the 14th of April, 1970. In it, McCartney expresses his dismay at that alteration of the long and winding road. I'd like to think that if Paul McCartney had been asked to collaborate on the orchestration of that song and been given the opportunity to give some feedback, his opinion of the Spectre end result would have been more favorable. Fans and critics seem to have mixed feelings about the long and winding road. Adam Sweeting of The Guardian commented, the Long and Winding Road is indubitably improved by the removal of Spectre's Wall of Schmaltz, but it's still teeth-clenchingly mawkish. As much as I get a chuckle from that comment, I wholeheartedly disagree. Wholeheartedly disagree. I enjoy the Phil Spectre version. The production on The Long and Winding Road fills in what otherwise sounds like a work in progress. While it's fascinating to hear the naked version, it just doesn't sound quite right to me without the Spectreization. It's worth noting that Let It Be Naked was released two days before Phil Spector was charged with the murder of actress Lana Clarkson. That certainly did not help secure a positive legacy or outward support for Spector. Having this photo out to the public probably didn't do him any favors either. The tragic waste of life at Spector's hands notwithstanding, it's a real shame Spector went off the rails the way he did. Spector had certainly contributed to the music industry leading up to his work with the Beatles, as illustrated on this fantastic box set, Back to Mono. Of course, he also went on to do some great solo work with John Lennon and George Harrison. Getting back to Let It Be Naked, the criticism toward Paul McCartney for perhaps using naked as a means of stroking his own ego were at least partially unfair. Beatles projects require equal approval, and Paul McCartney didn't have to strong arm anyone into getting this project made. From what I understand, George Harrison even gave his consent for the Naked Project before he passed. For the Let It Be Naked artwork, an alternate cover design was presented. Monochrome images of the Beatles replaced the original design. However, the photo of George Harrison originally used on Let It Be was swapped for one featuring him in performance. I suppose that toothy grin would not look as attractive with black teeth. That being the case, why not just go with a whole new design? I mean, the cover certainly could have been dressed up better. Let It Be Naked did come with a nice booklet featuring Ethan Russell photos and an essay by documentarian Kevin Howlett, who has long been associated with the Beatles and most recently contributed to the Let It Be special editions issued in October of 2021. In addition, the Let It Be Naked booklet includes extracts of transcribed dialogue from the original Let It Be book that was included with the 1970 UK box set. 
I'd be remiss in talking about Let It Be Naked if I didn't mention this additional disc, labeled as Fly on the Wall, and included with the original CD and vinyl copies of Naked. The disc was intended to be, as indicated in the liner notes, a unique insight into the Beatles at work, in rehearsal, and in the studio during January 1969. While the included material was nicely compiled by Kevin Howlett, the disc felt like a missed opportunity. The total running time is less than 22 minutes of approximately 140 hours of total material available. No sooner does anything get going than it gets cut off or blended into the next micro snippet. Glancing at this track listing gives the sense of what could have been an excellent second disc had it been flushed out. I suppose the disc worked fine as a bonus 45 with the vinyl version of Naked, but including the sparse offering as a separate CD which could have accommodated much more material just seemed a waste. Giving credit to Kevin Howlett, just as Peter Jackson has repeatedly stated, that what he encountered during the making of Get Back was not all doom and gloom? Howlett commented at the time of Naked, I had expected to hear the kind of disagreements and arguing we've all heard about. Instead, I heard the band members actually having a good time. By the end, they were, in fact, quite excited about what they were doing. Now having access to so much from the Get Back sessions, it seems that history may have gotten it wrong. Speaking of history, Is Let It Be Naked a release closer to the Beatles' 1969 vision? Well, not quite. Let It Be Naked is not the Beatles as nature intended. Instead, it's an approximation of what the original concept might have evolved into had the Beatles kept with it beyond January 1969. To accomplish this, Naked incorporates composite edits, bits flown in from various takes, digital corrections including, dare I say, auto-tune, and other studio trickery. Let's take a track-by-track look at the songs on Let It Be Naked. Leading off, Get Back is a remix of the January 27th, 1969 take used on the original Let It Be, without the framing dialogue from the studio and rooftop concert. Dig a Pony is a remix from the January 30th rooftop concert, The framing dialogue and false start, with Ringo shouting, HOLD IT, was removed. Controversially, an error in the second verse, where Lennon sings because, was digitally corrected with (gasps) auto-tune. You bounder, you cheat! For You Blue is a remix of the January 25th take used on the original album, which included Harrison's re-recorded lead vocal from January 8th, 1970. However, there is an included acoustic guitar part by George Harrison, which was originally omitted. For the long and winding road, the engineers chose a completely different take of the song. The final take, recorded on January 31st, 1969, with some alternate lyrics instead of the January 26th take used on the original Let It Be. This take includes guitar and electric piano left off the original Let It Be version, and of course the Phil Spector orchestral and choral overdubs are omitted. Two of Us is a remix of the original album version, recorded on January 31st, 1969, with the framing dialogue removed and another bit of digital correction, this time to fix a minor error in Lennon's acoustic guitar performance. The naked version of I've Got a Feeling is a composite edit of two takes from the Rooftop concert. One After 909 is a remix of the Rooftop performance, with John Lennon's impromptu rendition of Danny Boy at the end sadly removed. Don't Let Me Down is another composite edit of two takes from the Rooftop Concert. This was really well done. It's very nice to have and was unfortunately necessary due to Lennon flubbing lines in both Rooftop performances of the song. This track is a real highlight of Let It Be Naked. I Me Mine is a remixed, slightly different recreation of Spectre's copy-paste edit of the second chorus to increase the track's running time. The Spectre elements were mixed out, while guitar overdubs and organ parts were mixed in and out to make the repeated verse sound different. Across the Universe is another highlight of Naked. While Phil Spectre had significantly slowed the speed of this track, causing pitch alterations, this remixed version of the original track, recorded in February of 1968, restores the recording to its original speed and pitch. Maracas, keyboards, backing vocals, 
orchestral overdubs and sound effects were removed, while an echo effect was added. And while the effect gives Lennon's voice an ethereal quality as he repeatedly chants Jai Guru Deva, this is another element that doesn't quite stay within the boundary set forth for the Get Back recordings. <gasps> you bounder, you cheat! Then again, one could argue that Across the Universe was a bit of an outlier to begin with. As mentioned by Kevin Howlett in the liner notes from Naked, Across the Universe, as well as I, Me, Mine, were added to mirror the songs featured in the imminent movie. As the Beatles were seen in Let It Be playing Across the Universe, it was decided to include it in the album. Finally, Let It Be is a remix of the original album version, removing the Spectre elements and editing in an alternate George Harrison guitar solo. Also, an edit was used to mask a misplayed piano chord during the final verse. As you could see, quite a bit of production went into presenting this stripped-down version of Let It Be. Is Let It Be... Naked. Still a relevant release? If I had to choose only one version of Let It Be, it would be the original version every time. What's your opinion? Anthony DeCurtis of Rolling Stone thought of Let It Be Naked that, while the sonic improvements to the album as a whole are undeniable, novices should still get the original, and I have to agree. Thomas Bartlett of the news website Salon took things a step further when he lamented that Let It Be Naked stripped the original album of both John's sense of humor and Phil Spector's wacky and at least slightly tongue-in-cheek grandiosity. As much as I'd like to dispute that claim, I feel it's accurate if considering Let It Be Naked as a replacement to the original album. At the time of release, the American online music production Pitchfork referred to Let It Be Naked as not essential, though immaculately presented. While that statement also rings true, let It Be Naked can be essential as a companion to the original album. One is not forced to choose. The original album is a must-have for any Beatle fan, but I'm glad the world has both of these versions of Let It Be available. And now we have the 2021 remix of the original album, as well as an officially released version of the Glenn Johns Get Back album, included with the Let It Be Super Deluxe box set. While a listen through that album makes it apparent why it was not originally released, it's still excellent to have. The point is, there are plenty of options, and options are always nice to have. You can listen contentedly to all these versions of Let It Be. Let It Be Naked is still widely available on CD. The vinyl version is harder to come by these days. I don't own it, but thankfully I at least have this representation available as an inclusion in the Beatles Box of Vision album artwork book. Naked was mastered for an iTunes re-release on the iTunes Music Store in 2013. It's still available today and is also available on multiple streaming platforms. If you're a fan of the Beatles and you haven't already, why not subscribe to the channel? Beat that like button and leave a comment as part of this great community. And thanks so much for watching. The end.